We're here at Cincy AI Week with David Howard, and, and I want to just ask you to share with us a little bit about who you are and tell us about your company. Absolutely. Thanks. So I am an entrepreneur. I've been in and around early stage and growth companies my entire career, all software and primarily in healthcare. Um, my most recent company was in the ambulatory surgery center space. We built electronic health records and billing systems for surgery centers. I sold that in 2022 and joined the acquiring company for a year and spent time in the revenue organization, which was wonderful. I got to be exposed to all kinds of activities and process building and re-engineering that really led me to found Vendo IQ and help uh, fix some of the inefficiencies that were persistent even in a really smart and well-run organization. Okay, and what inspires you to do what you do? Well, I can't help myself. I like to build things first off, so that's part of the problem is I, I see a problem and I start working on it and then continue uh, to, to think through it to the point where sometimes I can get a bit obsessed with it. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, if spending a year with an acquiring entity I needed to take care of my customers, and so I was able to spend time with the field sales force, with management leadership, and really see how the sausage was made in a, again, a very well-run company uh, that had defined processes or were going through uh, re-engineering those processes. Even then, what I was discovering was that the the asymmetry was with people in the field, the, the friction of being able to to update corporate systems was really problematic and therefore information flow was choked when you're in real life talking to people. Okay. What's a value that you held as a kid or something you just believed to be true that still motivates you today? Uh, I think integrity has to be top of the list. I know that's a little bit trite to say, but I think, you know, integrity and honesty is your, you know, your, your brand, your personal brand and how you do business and do what you say you're going to do even when sometimes that's not in your best interest. So sometimes I'm that way to a fault, but I believe it carries you through and makes people want to work with you. Okay. And how is your brand using AI to make a difference? Well, we are <clears throat> introducing a voice AI uh, application that can be carried anywhere in the world on a mobile phone that helps field sales teams or say an event market or really anybody that's representing a company or helping them do their job without that friction. It's voice enabled. We don't have to type. I like to say that salespeople are talkers, not typers. So if we can harness that, that energy and that quality and the context and turn that into timely, uh, nuanced updates, management gets exactly what they want. And that the thing that they're star for today, which is more accurate and timely updates. And how does that collaboration between the human side and the AI work? So we are building out an orchestration platform behind the scenes. Even though it's a voice front end, we need AI to process speech. And that means we need to be able to understand dialect. We need to understand nomenclature from different industries and be able to pipe that into and from corporate systems in a, in a meaningful way. So just speaking into something, we can do that into a notes field today. We can I voice text all the time, but it stays where it is, or it's just person to person. We need to make this one to many in terms of how we broadcast that information. And at the same time, we need to build out a layer that will bring information back to somebody that doesn't have the luxury of being on a desktop computer with access to multiple windows, we need to do it in a very small footprint on your mobile phone so they can be highly efficient when they need to be. What are some of the challenges when it comes to the AI technology and sure. creating that? Uh, the first one that stands out to me is ambient noise, filtering out backgrounds. We're in a quiet setting here, so it's easy to have a conversation and I'm not even mic'd. The moment. So that makes you guys can record this without any issues. If you're upstairs and you're trying to record a conversation, it's a different environment. You get background noise filtering, you have to filter out rather. So we had to work hard to create something that will filter and give us quality uh, audio. And what do you think that co creation, when it comes to humans and the AI working together, is going to look like in the future? Well, I think you're going to have your own set of 
teams, your agent team. So as an individual in your role, whatever that may be, if you're in a procurement role or a sales role or a finance role, or customer service role, you will then deploy your team, even at an individual contributor level, you're gonna to need to know how to manage or harness the power agents so that you're more productive. I do think we're gonna see fewer people in seats within organizations at the human level, but those that are, are gonna be supercharged by having their own virtual teams. And talk a little bit more about how the AI will help uh, kind of overhaul some of those uh, human weakness points that the, the human touch can't do alone. So a couple of areas that come to mind, one, we're humans have only enough speed to do a process in a particular way. So I think we can cut down and be more efficient on processes, especially leaving out low value or eliminating things that are of no value, automating the low value and on up the food chain. The other thing I think is interesting is where systems have friction points where they're handoffs and data doesn't naturally move between them. So if we can have a layer of orchestration that helps systems do those connection points and be smart and learn from them, it's going to really enable their human counterparts in the organization to make them more knowledgeable in, in of a timely manner. And on the other side of that, what are the things that AI just can't replace? Well, we can't replace the in real life, right? And that's what the purpose of my company is, is to harness and not listen in, but to actually allow people to connect, to build trust, to build rapport, just to learn about one another without having to worry about being recorded. It's intrusive. I might not like being recorded. Some do, most don't. I don't, I might be more guarded in telling you what you might want to know, and that's amplified and made worse in a corporate environment, right? You don't want people to walk away with information that they don't need to have. So I, I do think we're going to have a tremendous value put on real life conversations and how meaningful they are to generating business relationships and personal relationships. And what about you personally? What's your superhero power that AI could never replace? Uh, I, I, I think I, I can inspire. I think I can help people rally around a cause, whether that be in an early stage company or a growth stage company or just in real life, um, just using the honesty and integrity I talked about that helped me be who I am. Um, so I think that builds trust and, and allows people to, people want to work with me, I think. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to share with us at Cincy AI Week. Awesome. Thank you so much. This has been fun. I really appreciate it.